So here we're going to talk about transformer clock shifts. And the reason why it's called a transformer clock shift is because if you look at a transformer and you're looking at the vector diagrams, right, um, what's unique about them is that whenever you look at, for example, A phase to on the primary to A phase in the secondary, it's either, you know, usually some multiple of 30 degree increment. And coincidentally, if you look at a clock, and if you were to say, I have 360 degrees on this clock, so we're going to write 360 degrees here, and every hour, there's 12 of them, right? So if we divide them by 12 hours, then what do you get? You get 30 degrees per one hour. And so that's why they're called transformer clock shifts is because we're talking about 30 degrees in the positive or the negative direction. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. And this first one that we have here is uh, is shown. It's the easiest one that you could probably do. And this is going to be a YY. Now we're going to talk about um, uh, TTRs and how to set, you know how to do some of that later but right now what's important is understanding your vector groups okay so when you're looking at the transformer it doesn't tell you what the vector group of this transformer is however I can tell you that this is a Y N Y N zero okay and the reason why it's labeled like this is because the primary is always capital letters and so this is our primary right here. And so it's a Y and the, the, the neutral is brought out. It is accessible. You can also see that if you look over here, your HO and XO are commonly bonded and they were brought out of the transformer. So that's why this is a Y in and both letters are capital. Okay. Because it's the primary. Now the primary is also um, assigned by default at the 12 o'clock position. So if I look at A phase on the primary and here, we're gonna look at B phase on both. So it doesn't matter which phase you look at from the primary to the secondary, it just matters that you're looking at the same phase. So you need to be looking at A phase on both, right? That's right here, or B phase on both, that's fine too, right? So right now, what, what we're going to leverage is the fact that B phase is on the primary is already at 12 o'clock. So where is B phase on the secondary? Well, that's at 12 o'clock also. Now we don't need to label this as a Y in 12 or a zero, right? Y in zero we, we, or 12, it doesn't matter. We don't need to do that because we're already always by default going to assign the primary at 12. So if we assign the primary at 12, the secondary is a Y in because the neutral is brought out like we said, and the clock shift from primary to secondary is zero degrees because they're both at 12 o'clock. So that's how this is done. Let's look at another one. And this one right here is one of the more common ones and they even gave us our vector group. So we're just gonna confirm that, right? Using this same logic. And here it's a Delta. So this is a big D, okay? And then we have a Y with a new, with an accessible neutral on the secondary. So this is, remember, we don't need the clock for the, tw for the primary. So this is gonna be a Y, N. And then what's our clock shift? Well. If H2 is directly up, as you look at that, where is X2? Well, it's at one o'clock. So that puts this at a DYN1. And lo and behold, that's exactly what they got there. All right, so let's look at the next one. This is pretty much the exact same, okay? And I'll just do it again, so that way you can kind of understand. Um, the, this is going to be a delta on the primary, delta. And then the secondary, I'm gonna overlap these and actually I'll change the color right here. So that way you can see this is gonna be a Y right here. And uh, I'm not exactly you know, spot on with my, ever, with my uh, uh, picture, but this is uh, my X1 and X2, and this is X3. This is also called superimposing on top of each other, okay? And so we're gonna say this is my H1, H2, H3, okay? And if you look, each one of these, there's a gap right here between X1 and H1, a gap between X2 and H2, and a gap between 
and it's probably just because my triangle looks like crap, H3 and X3. So this means this is a delta on the primary, uh, and it has an accessible neutral. You can also see that in your tap connections brought out, your bushing connections. And so this is a Y, N, and each one of these, if this thing was rotating A phase, then B phase, then C phase, in this direction, counterclockwise, H1 would pass by, and then X1 would be 30 degrees later, which makes it look like this, because our clock is going to be doing the same thing. This is the delta and the Y at 30 degree phase shift between them, which is a 1 o'clock, because our delta is at 12 and our Y is at 1. Okay, just another way of, of representing that. So what's our next one? I'm going to skip. This is, the, uh, this is a Y on the primary. And so what does this one look like? Well, this is a Y right here. So capital Y is the neutral brought out. Yes, the neutral is brought out it is right here. Okay, I circled all this, but this is a neutral. Okay, so this is a Y N. Remember, it's at 12 o'clock by default. We don't have to put that in there. And then where is this with respect to um, excuse me, the, the, the next one is a delta, so it's a delta on the secondary, just a little d, okay? And then where is the delta with respect to the y? Well, what you see is they, they helped you out, they put the dashed line right here, okay? So that means that H x1 is going straight out this way. And if you look, if it rotates counterclockwise in this direction, H1 is right here and then x1, okay? So what does that mean? That means that x1 come, I mean, H1 comes first and then x1. So if you look at the clock shift, this is our H1, and then this is rotating just like the other one. So then x1, so x1 is at a 1, so there it is. This is a y n d one that is the name of this the, the, the vector group of this transformer okay and it doesn't look like it's showing on here anywhere but that's what this is so let's look at another one this one is uh, a and maybe you could try to figure it out take a guess but i can look at this and tell you this is a d y n one this looks essentially just like um this one right here okay no difference now what i want to show you is uh an example on this one and this will be the last one we do this is directly out of the sel 587 manual and uh this is appendix f and this is a is a gold mine for a lot of great information for connections and so if you look at this this is a, a y on the primary and what is our secondary well Let's make sure that we get the, the second part of the Y, right? Is it a Y in or not? Well, it's left in here, but we never brought the neutral out. So this is a Y, and you can look right there. It's not showing it. So this is a Y with no neutral, okay? So that's why if you look right here, it says it's a YD11. That's why. There's no neutral. So the secondary is a delta with a little D. And then what is the, the uh, clock shift? Well, if you look... B comes straight out to the right, so let's just use that as an example. It's just the easiest way to look at it. So this is little b, right? We're comparing same phase, and what? well, lo and behold, little b is, if this is rotating in this direction, right? If you're standing right where A phase is, what what comes first? Big A, and then big B, and then little b, I mean, uh, big A, then B, then C, because this whole clock's rotating A, B, C. So you would see little b first and then big b. And if you redraw this as a clock shift it, that actually looks straight, you would have big b. Remember, big b is always going to be at 12 o'clock. So where is little b with respect to that? We're just going to redraw it right here. Well, little b is going to be right here. This is little b. That means that little b is at 11 o'clock. And that's how you get these clock shifts. Okay, so hopefully that helps. The next one we're going to do is probably going to be over TTRs.